Hello and welcome to the Command Valley. My name is Griffin and you are watching another Command Valley Deck Tech. Firstly, if you're not already subscribed and you like our content, please make sure to like and subscribe. Another reminder that this episode and this podcast is sponsored by GameGrid Lehigh, the best game store in Utah by far. If you are looking for another way to support the channel and also looking for cards, then please follow the affiliate link in the description box below to be rerouted to the GameGrid website to purchase any cards and singles that you might need. If you are looking to purchase this deck, we will include a copy and pasteable deck list in the description box that you can take to GameGrid's website and input it into their deck list, pull up all of those cards, and ship them right to you. One final thing before we begin is we have recently just announced our Patreon. If you are looking for the best way to support us and our podcast, we invite you to go over to patreon.com slash commandvalley and give it a look and see if you want to participate and get access to exclusive content, bonus features, and tons of other cool stuff. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Today we are covering another commander from Double Masters and one of the first decks that I ever built, and that is Kalia of the Vast. Kalia of the Vast is one red, white, black for a 2-2 legendary creature cleric human with flying and whenever Kalia of the Vast attacks an opponent, you may put an angel, demon, or dragon creature from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking that opponent. If you have ever played against a Kalia deck, you know that this is scary good. There are so many options for angels and demons and dragons that you can put into this deck and bust them out before your opponents even know what hit them. For today, we're actually covering a deck list that I built for Kalia that is $80, including Kalia, now that she's been reprinted. So again, if you want to buy this deck, please go to the description box below, and there will be a deck list that you can copy and paste and bring to GameGrid's website. Again, this deck is $80, including all of the non-land and land cards that I've put into this deck. So let's go ahead and begin. The first thing that we want to talk about is the angels, demons, and dragons that we have in this deck. If you are building your own version of Kalia, you may just want to build angels, maybe just demons, just dragons, combination of the three. But for our $80 budget build, we've actually included all three of them. So I have angels, demons, and dragons, so we'll go through them one at a time. First off, we'll go ahead and go over angels. We have Angel of Finality, which is three and a white for a three, four creature angel with flying. When it enters the battlefield, exile all cards from target player's graveyard. This can be really nice to interact with a graveyard shenanigan opponent or to stop people from reoccurring things from the graveyard. Angel of Sanctions is three white white for a three four angel with flying. When Angel of Sanctions enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-land permanent opponent controls until Angel of Sanctions leaves the battlefield. You can also embalm it for five and a white. Very effective removal, and if it gets removed, we can always embalm it. Bassandra, Battle Seraph. For three red white, we have a 4-4 angel with flying. Players can't cast spells during combat, and for one red, target creature attacks this turn if able. So you can force an opponent to attack with one of their creatures that they don't want to attack with, whether it be a Dryad of Elysian Grove, maybe it's a Nyx Bloom Ancient, if they haven't won with it already, but that effect is very good. A Dark Heart Valkyrie is four white white for a 4-5 with flying and vigilance. You can tap her when target creature other than a Dark Heart Valkyrie dies this turn, return that card to the battlefield under your control. Aegis Angel, 4 white white for a 5-5 with flying. When it enters the battlefield, another target opponent gains indestructible for as long as you control Aegis Angel. Now usually you'd want to just put this on Kalia if this is the first angel you're putting out, but sometimes we have some other angels and demons and dragons that are very very effective that we want to target with Aegis Angel. Angelic Skirmisher is 4 white white for a 4-4 angel with flying. At the beginning of each combat, choose First Strike, Vigilance, or Lifelink. Creatures you control gain that ability until end of turn. Now this is the beginning of each combat, so if you give all of your creatures Vigilance on your turn, on the next turns you can give them First Strike or Lifelink, and that will really stop their, your opponents from, from wanting to swing at you. Sarah's Guardian is 4 white white for a 5-5 with flying. Vigilance and other creatures you control have Vigilance. Angel of Despair is 3 white white black black for a 5 5 creature angel with flying when it enters the battlefield destroy target permanent so this is very effective removal with a 5 5 body with flying on top of it. Angel of Serenity is 4 white 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 for a 5 6 with flying. When Angel of Serenity enters the battlefield you may exile up to 3 other target creatures from the battlefield and or creature cards from graveyards. And when Angel of Serenity leaves the battlefield return the exiled cards to their owner's hands. This is one of my favorite budget angels that really slots into, into a lot of white decks. One of the best things about it is when you exile it and say Angel of Serenity gets removed, it won't return those creatures to the battlefield like a Banishing Light or an Oblivion Ring would. It returns it to their hands, which is very good at being able to kind of time walk your opponent by taking things out. 
Angel of Dire Hour is 5 white white for a 5-4 with flash and flying when it enters the battlefield. If you cast it from your hand, exile all attacking creatures. Now this is a good angel that can be handy in a situation where you need to hold mana up to stop an opponent, say with a lot of tokens. But if we want to just get some extra 5 damage in, we can always just get it out with Kalia. Emiria Shepherd, 5 white white for a 4-4 with flying and landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may return target non-land permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If that land is a plains, you may return that non-land permanent card to the battlefield instead. Now, if we do have a plains, that's amazing because we really want to get onto the battlefield. But with Kalia's ability, we don't mind having these in our hand because we can just cheat them out with her. Resolute Archangel, 5 white white for a flying 4-4 angel. When it enters the battlefield, if your life total is less than your starting life total, it becomes equal to your starting life total. This is very, very important for a Kalia deck because we're going to be attacking and being very aggressive, which means we're leaving ourselves open for some damage. And Resolute Archangel can reset us and just give us that oomph that we need to finish the game. Safara Sky's Blade is 4 white 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 for a 7-7. Seven, seven. An alternate casting cost of white and 4 untapped creatures you control with flying. Has flying and lifelink, and other creatures you control with flying have indestructible. Spoiler alert, 99% of the creatures we have in here are flying. Acroma, Angel of Wrath. 5 white 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 for a 6-6 six, six angel with flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, haste, and protection from black and red. Ray of Dawnbringer, which is 6 white 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 for a 4-6 angel at the beginning of your upkeep, you return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So those are all the amazing angels we have in this deck, so let's go ahead and just move on to the demons. First up we have Arcfiend of Depravity, 3 black black for a 5-4 flying demon at the beginning of each opponent's end step, that player chooses up to 2 creatures he or she controls, then sacrifices the rest. This is exceptionally useful in this deck because if you have a deck like Kalia where you're not going to be able to keep up with some of your opponents and their board states, we can use an Arcfiend to kind of level them so that we can keep on top. Demon of Dark Schemes is 3 black 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 for a 5-5 five, five demon with flying. When it enters the battlefield, all other creatures get minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. And whenever another creature dies, you get a energy counter. Then, for 2 and a black, and pay 4 energy counters, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control tapped. Now this does kill Kalia, so this might not be something you want to play first with Kalia. However, if we're looking at a board state where our opponents have a ton of tokens, 1-1 one -one soldiers or plants, zombies, anything like that, we can get rid of them with the Demon of Dark. We can get rid of them with the Demon of Dark schemes. Demon Lord Bells and Lock is 4 black black for a 6-6 six -six demon with flying and trample. When it enters the battlefield, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card, then put that card into your hand. If the card's converted mana cost is 4 or greater, repeat this process. Demon Lord Bells and Lock deals 1 damage to you for each card put into your hand this way. All of the angels, demons, and dragons we have in this deck are above 4 mana, so we're going to be able to hit a we're going to be hit able to hit all of our creatures off of Demon Lord Bells and Lock. Gormand is 4 black black for a 5/5 five five creature with flying and trample. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature and as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature. However, we can ignore that if we're cheating in with Kalia, but our opponents will still have to sacrifice a creature. Really nice budget option. Cothoped, Soul, Cothoped, 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 Soul Hoarder. For 4 black black, we have a 6 6 legendary creature demon with flying. Whenever a permanent owned by another player is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose one life. Reaper from the Abyss is 3 black 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 for a 6-6 six, six creature demon, with flying in morbid at the beginning of each end step if a creature died this turn, destroy target non-demon creature. Overseer of the Damned is 5 black black for a 5-5 five, five demon with flying, when it enters the battlefield you may destroy target creature, and whenever a non-token creature an opponent controls dies, put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped. Villas, Broker of Blood, is 5 black 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 for an 8-8 eight, eight legendary creature demon with flying. For 1 black, pay 2 life, target creature gets minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. Whenever you lose life, draw that many cards. One of the best budget demons that you can get. Honestly, I'm surprised that it's only a couple bucks, but it slots very well into this deck. Moving on to the dragons, we have Hellkite Charger. For 4 red red, we have a 5-5 five, five dragon with flying in haste and whenever it attacks you may pay five red red if you do untap all attacking creatures and after this phase there is an additional combat phase because if we're getting another combat phase that means we're going to be able to drop another demon angel or dragon with kalia ryusei the falling star for five and a red we have a five five flying legendary creature dragon spirit when it when it's put into a graveyard from play it deals five damage to each creature without flying this is kind of a sub-theme that I've put into this deck that we'll see a little bit later on, but essentially, since all of our creatures have flying, anything that deals damage to only things without flying 
Mwah. Perfect. Steel Hellkite is 6 generic for a 5-5 five, five artifact dragon with flying. For 2 generic, Steel Hellkite gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of a turn. And for X, destroy each non-land permanent with convert amount of cost X, whose controller was dealt damage by Steel Hellkite this turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. Pseudo removal, that requires you to deal combat damage, but that can be pretty easy when we're sneaking things through. Blade Wing the Risen for three, black, black, red, red. We have a four, four dragon with flying. When it comes into play, you may return target dragon card from a graveyard to play. And for Rakdos, all dragons get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Dragon Mage, which is one of the best cards we have in this deck. Five red, red, a five, five dragon. When it deals combat damage to a player, each player discards his or her hand and draws seven cards. This is very important this deck because since we're playing Mardu and we're playing Budget, we don't have a lot of options to draw cards continuously, so a Dragon Maze can be amazing if we're dumping our hands onto the battlefield. Dracoseth Maw of Flames is 4 red 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 for a 7-7 seven, seven legendary dragon with flying. Whenever it attacks, it deals 4 damage to any target and 3 damage each of up to 2 other targets. That's 14 damage when he comes out. Oh boy! Reminder that when Kalia brings Dracoseth onto the battlefield. Technically, the attack trigger will not go off because you've already gone to declare attackers, but the next turn you can do some heavy damage with Dracoseth. And last up, we've got Terror of Mount Villas. For five red red, we've got a five five dragon with flying and double strike, and when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain double strike until end of turn. This can just be a game ender all on its own. If you only, you only need a couple of creatures out, you can just wipe somebody out. Now that we've gone over all of the angels, demons, and dragons, which are the main core of this deck, Let's go over the Mana Ramp, our Interaction, and our Synergy cards. First up for Interaction, we've got Dispark, which is white-black for an instant exile target permanent with converted mana cost 4 or greater. Heliod's Intervention, for white-white X, we have an instant. To choose 1, destroy X target artifacts and or enchantments, or target player gains twice X life. A really, really good budget card to get rid of a lot of artifacts and enchantments. It kind of reminds me of a uh, Vandal Blast in white. Rakdos Charm is black red for an instant choose one, exile all cards from target player's graveyard, or destroy target artifact, or each creature deals one damage to its controller. Rakdos Charm can be really really good in certain situations, and, and most of the time you'll find a mode to use for this. Exiling all cards from a graveyard shenanigan player can be very hectic to their strategy. Destroying a really pesky artifact, say if it's a Bolas' Citadel, Chromatic Orrery, Eldrazi Monument. And then if you're playing against a token deck that's pumping out a crap ton of tokens, that last mode can just end them right then and there. Response Resurgence is a double face card from Guilds of Ravnica. You can choose either side. The first side is Response. Instant. Response deals 5 damage to target attacking or blocking creature. And Resurgence, creatures you control gain first strike and vigilance until end of turn. After this main phase, there is an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. Allowing us to get two combat steps with Kalia is very, very good. Terminate, black and red, instant destroy target creature, it can't be regenerated. Wear in Terror is another double face card that you can actually cast both since it has fuse. Wear for one and a red, destroy target artifact, and Terror for one white, destroy target enchantment. Chaos Warp for two and a red, we have an instant. The owner of target permanent shuffles it into his or her library, then reveals the top card of his or her library. If it's a permanent card, he or she puts it onto the battlefield. Mortify for one white black we have an instant destroy target creature or enchantment. Unmake is white black white black white black hybrid exile target creature. Last up in our, our interaction is our board wipes and in this we actually have quite a bit because there are cards in magic that deal damage to only creatures without flying. So cards like Magma Quake, which is red red X for an instant. Magma Quake deals X damage to each creature without flying in each planeswalker. Earthquake for red and X we have a sorcery. Earthquake deals X damage to each creature without flying in each player. Along with that, we also have a Cleansing Nova for 3 white white. We have a Sorcery, choose 1, destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments. A Chroma's Vengeance for 4 white white. We have a Sorcery, destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments, which you can also cycle for 3. And my personal favorite, Runus Ultimatum for red red, white white white, black black. We have a Sorcery, destroy all non-land permanents your opponents control. Oh my gosh, this card. I have still not been disappointed by any of the ultimatums. They have all served me very well, even the Jeskai one. Going over the mana ramp, since we're playing Mardu, we don't have a lot of options for mana ramp. That is budget, so we have a lot of artifacts. So we have Wayfarer's Bauble, Boros Signet, Orzov Signet, Rakdos Signet, Talisman of Conviction, Talisman of Hierarchy, Commander's Sphere, Firemind Vessel, and Hedron Archive. 
before we move on to the synergy, let's talk about the card draw in this deck. We do have Villas and a couple other angels and demons that can draw some cards. But for our Barza deck, we have Painful Truths, which is 2 and a black for a sorcery with Converge. You draw X cards and you lose X life, where X is the number of colors of mana spent to cast Painful Truths. Read the Bones is a sorcery for 2 and a black, scry 2, then draw 2 cards, you lose 2 life. Ambition's Cost is 3 and a black for a sorcery, you draw 3 cards and you lose 3 life. Siphon Mind, a sorcery, each other player discards a card, you draw a card for each card discarded this way. Underworld Connections is one black black for an enchantment, aura, enchant land. Enchanted land has tap, pay one life, and draw a card. Liliana's Contract is three black black for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you may draw four cards, then you lose four life. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control four or more demons with different names, you win the game. That's the basis to the card draw. There are a lot of black card draw spells that, that make you lose life. These are only a couple of them, but if you want to swap them out for some other ones, go for it. And then last up, we have our synergistic cards. So cards that work really well with the strategy that we're doing. We have Master Warcraft, which is an instant for two Boros Boros hybrid. Cast this spell only before attackers are declared. You may choose which creatures attack this turn, and you choose which creatures block this turn and how those creatures block. This can be very, very good on our own side where we're just trying to get creatures out of the way, say if they have some flying creatures and we need to get rid of a and we need to get rid of an opponent and we just say that they don't block with them or if we make them make poor blocks. However, this also works on an opponent's turn. Let's say one of your opponents has overrun the board and you don't have anything to deal with it. You can cast this before attackers on their turn and choose their creatures to attack, make them attack another opponent, maybe take them out, leave them tapped and then swing at them the next turn. Unburial Rites is four and a black for a sorcery return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield and it has flashback for three and a white. Now the reason why this is synergistic is because our angels, demons, and dragons are going to be the one spot removal targets. So we can bring them back within Burial Rites and just keep swinging. Whisper Sick Cloak is uh, artifact equipment for three generic. A crit creature can't be blocked and has shroud and it has equip for two. So we can make sure that Kalia, number one, has shroud and number two does not die to a blocker. And last up we have True Conviction, which is an enchantment for three white, white, white. Creatures you control have double strike and lifelink. And if our creatures weren't bad enough as they are, giving them double strike and lifelink will certainly make them even worse. And last but not least, let's talk about the mana base in this deck. Since we are playing budget, we have a lot of tap lands and budget lands, but that is okay. We have included the three thriving lands from Jumpstart. Very useful to be able to get the mana that we need. We have Acume Refuge, Bloodfell Caves, Rakdos Carnarium, Rakdos Guildgate, Battlefield Forge, Boros Garrison, Boros Guildgate, Windscarred Craig, Cinder Barons, Forsaken Sanctuary, Orzov Basilica, Orzov Guildgate, Scoured Barons, Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, Command Tower, Nomad Outpost, A Myriad Landscape, Five Mountains, Five Plains, and Five Swamps. If you want a link to the full deck list, please just check the deck in the show notes below. We will have a copy and pasteable link for you to take over to GameGrid if you're looking to purchase this deck to get those cards shipped right to you. Alright, and that is it for this deck tech. I hope you guys enjoyed my version of Kalia. Right now sitting at $80 at the time this is released. This is an absolutely fun deck to play. Packs a heavy punch and overall still one of my favorite commanders. A reminder, if you want to pick this deck up, we will have a copy and pasteable link of the deck list in the show notes below that you can take over to Game Grip's website and put into the deck builder toolkit on their website. You can select which cards you want, you can select what the condition is, and they will ship it right to your house. Make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We'll have the Twitter and Facebook handles in the show notes. Help us keep growing. We really appreciate it. Another exciting announcement slash reminder... Command Valley is now streaming on Twitch every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We are going to be playing Brawl and having a real fun time doing so. So come hang out, come check it out, come have a great time. All right, guys, appreciate you so much. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video, and we will see you next time for our next deck tech, and we will see you next time. <laughs>